Welcome everybody to the OMG Wrestling Podcast. This is the WWE and Pro Wrestling Talk Show. I want to let you guys know that this is on iTunes, on YouTube, and at omgwrestling.com. Now today this is going to be a little bit different than the usual talks here. Today is a brand new series we like to call dot 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 dive. And why we're calling it dive is because we have a deeper dive into a specific topic. Now, you know, we do the reviews. We do uh, pay-per-view ones with uh, Slam Reversary and Great Balls of Fire. We do Raw and SmackDown. We do NXT sometimes. Uh, we might even do a 205 Live. Go look at some retro stuff. But today is a very important topic. But before we get into this topic... I want to let you guys know one more time that we are over on iTunes and make sure that you subscribe over on iTunes. And I want to let Angle let you know about something awesome we're doing over there as well. That's right. Thank you, Tony. So here on the iTunes, it's exclusively for the people that are tuning in. Guys, we are going to give away a $25 gift card to the Apple Store. So if you guys are interested at all, make sure you guys stay in tune because we'll be giving you guys more details throughout many podcast episodes. Very, very exciting. So many opportunities for people to win. I know for a fact people are going to enjoy this prize because there is so much stuff you could get at the Apple Store. And trust me, I am buying a lot of stuff at the Apple Store. So... We will do a giveaway. Yes, we definitely will. We want to encourage you guys to help support the show. We'll talk a little bit more about that towards the middle, maybe end of this. Um, but I also wanted to thank one of our big sponsors for the show, and that is Gunner's Glasses. They are the ones that make those sweet glasses that I wear all the time. They help filter out the blue light. And what is up with the blue light? The blue light is bad for your eyes. If you stare at screens, computer screens, TVs, phones all the time, you see a lot of blue light coming in, and that helps put strain on your eyes. And wearing these glasses prevents that. And this is a very, very good thing. And I, and I, the thing is, I don't endorse in, at the OMG podcast in Ango. We don't endorse products that we don't use and that we don't believe in. So I wanted to let you guys know, Gunners is the sponsor for this, and if you want to get a pair of Gunners and save 10%, go to omgwrestling.com slash G-U-N-N-A-R-S and use code TonyPizzaGuy at checkout. Woo! All right, Angle, you ready to dive deep into this show? I think I'm ready. All right, so this first one is a doozy. As you know by the title of this video and episode, this is... Uh, how to make WWE better. Now, we've <laughs> this could go many different ways. Uh, you know what? If uh, John Cena would turn heel and Roman Reigns would... Uh, whatever. That's kind of where most people think this episode's going, right? Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's what everybody's expecting us to talk about. But I think we should go a little bit off the script and not do what is expected. Yeah, we don't really want to go with the fix this, fix that, do this fantasy book Roman Reigns to be the ultimate bad guy for all the times and end of whatever. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about something that I feel is kind of missing in the WWE and it is partnerships. It is friendships. It is factions. Um, I know that the shield was around for a while and they were one of the best things that WWE had in programming. But now you look at the factions. I don't know if there's really enough factions i'm not a huge fan of the women's one they got going on smackdown with the uh, tamina and natalia and all that stuff and then we got raw we got what do we even have on raw we have bo dallas miz and uh curtis axel and that's it pretty much that's all we got Ango. i i mean uh, like honestly when you think about like like even look at like New Japan Pro Wrestling, they're killing it right now. And what do they do? They have factions. And the thing that I think is missing in WWE is the fact that they don't have any factions. Um, and even just to the fact where people can be friends and they can be a part of the same group, but they don't always have to come out together. They don't always have to like team up together. That's what I really like about it because um, in New Japan, they have a lot of people that are in like a group called Chaos and they don't really do a lot together, but they're just like grouped together. And sometimes they'll do tag matches together. And that's kind of like... I feel like WWE is missing that. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Well, it's funny that you actually mentioned that because when you look back in the history of WWE, I mean, they've had some really famous factions. Um, clearly at this point with WWE, it's something that they're missing, and you're absolutely right. Now, whether we want to refer to it as a friendship or a faction or whatever the case may be, uh, they are definitely lacking in 
in that area. Um, and it's funny because I don't know how how much of wrestling you would watch during like the Nexus days, mm-hmm. but and we'll probably dive a little bit into that. But uh, I mean, just imagine, you know, some some sort of group, whether it's a babyface group or a heel group, you know, just making a very very big change to the current state of WWE. That's what's missing. Um, I don't know, it, it, like. Now that I think about it, I don't know if I really consider the New Day like a, a faction or a stable. I mean, they're kind of like a tag team. But, yeah, they're they're missing a lot of this in WWE programming. Um, and, and it's funny because you mentioned the Shield, and it's like there's so much good that they've had in the past. And, and for some reason, it's one of those things like, you know, why ruin something good when you don't really have to? And they didn't have to end the Shield. I don't think, you know, like, I don't think like, I I think they kind of did that a little too early, but, um, you know, let me ask you a question, Tony, and this, I think this would be the best time to, to ask this question when it comes to, you know, factions in WWE, which one stands out as the most successful realistically, because, you know, I don't know, and maybe we can kind of dive into this, but I don't know if I can really create a, a fantasy faction based on the current roster. I think I would have a hard time being, you know, very, very detailed in that regard. But what is a, what is a faction that kind of stood out to you? you know, um, in your definitely when you were mentioning the, the Nexus, that's a huge one that sticks out to me. Just because it was all a bunch of guys who kind of felt like they got pushed to the side and they were like... uh John Cena's just taking the, this was about this was around that time when John Cena was like shoved down our throats and people were like John Cena sucks it's all about John you know what I mean it was just felt like the John Cena show um I think he has recovered in years John Cena and that's another day for another topic but I will say that it just worked for me with the Nexus because it was a lot of guys who had a lot of anger and they felt like we as fans also felt like these are the guys that we should be seeing not the the John Cena every week we want to see these young up and coming guys and they all band together and them banding together um, was able to overcome a guy like John Cena in, in the WWE. And that's what I really liked was just like these hungry young guys who are, are just fed up with the current system in the WWE. And I think like even now, I mean, there's, there's a lot more factions that I could go with. Like one of my all time favorites was the corporation and then the ministry. And then when the corporate ministry went together until Vince took over, um, you can't forget about the NWO, uh, DX, of course, as well. But I will say we need to see another type of young, hungry group of guys that band together and they're just fed up with the system of WWE. I feel like it's a perfect time. Um, I feel like we had a nice idea with 205 Live and saying, OK, these cruiserweights are going to have a, a platform to get over, but they're not getting over So I think you need to take a couple of those guys, even if you want to bring back Austin Aries. I don't think they will, but I'd say you could get Austin Aries, maybe even get Titus O'Neil, the Titus brand, uh, put a a cure to, I don't know, who else you want to put together? Put a bunch of Discount Cruiserweights who are mad that they're stuck in 205 Live and they want to be on the main roster fighting for the WWE title. Put them all together and you could make something special out of it. I don't know what you think of that. I think you're copping out a little bit. And... I don't disagree, but I don't like it, you know? So here's the thing. You can always have the faction filled with disgruntled wrestlers. Uh, in that case, it's very easy to pick out a couple wrestlers who make a lot of sense, right? Dolph Ziggler, Ty Dillinger. Uh, I mean, you could even throw, I mean, especially with SmackDown, um, if you really want Baron Corbin, even though he's Money in the Bank briefcase holder, I mean, there's a lot of guys who, you know, based on their gimmicks and stuff like that, there's a lot of guys who aren't really elevating. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately having a faction with 205 live, 205 live guys, like I get where you're coming from and, and I don't disagree with you, but I don't like it. And the reason why I don't like it is because when I think of a faction, right. And I'm going to go based on the fact that there was a star that came out of this faction specifically. Okay. So when when people talk about factions, they're talking DX, NWO. Um, This faction shouldn't really be a surprise because it was such a big faction, but I feel like it doesn't get its shine. And you got to look at Evolution, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you think of key members of Evolution, obviously it's Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, Ric Flair. 
And you got to understand that every single one of these guys was a main eventer at some point, and it created a new star in Randy Orton. Like, Randy Orton was kind of a star, but he was still in the shadow of Triple H, Ric Flair, and Batista. Mm -hmm. Um, Randy Orton became a star after. So I like the idea of a faction that's all about money, power, respect. Uh, I mean, like... I don't know if you ever remember when Evolution attacked Scott Steiner, but it yeah. was like the coolest thing. Like it was like the coolest thing ever for me because it was like I was still young. Like I think that was like around 2003, 2004. But I just think when I when I think of a faction right now, uh, and if I really want to put one together, I want to put together based on the world's current events, one that's relevant to to society. Um, so I hate – maybe this is also a cop-out, and, and feel free to, you know, chime in, but uh, a, a faction that's, you know, un-American. Uh, well, we do have, faction. like, gender and the Bollywood Boys, but that's not really a fact. It's more like gender, and then those guys help gender is how I feel. Well, well, you have Kevin Owens, who's now anti-America because he's no longer the champion. You have, you know, you have – he's French-Canadian. I mean, you have superstars that I feel like could fit the mold for a faction like this. Um, I don't know, man. Like, do do we need a heel faction? Do we need a baby face faction? Like, in this situation with WWE, there's so many things that are wrong with WWE. So I don't want to say a faction fixes everything, but they need something that just immediately makes a big splash, right? So, like, one th- you mentioned, like, New Japan. They have great factions over there. If you take them out of New Japan, realistically, nobody's going to care about New Japan. So how can we make people in WWE care about factions? You know, is it anti-authority? You know, is it somebody that's anti-Triple H? Is it guys, you know, like, you know, it, is it your workhorses? Is it is it your Dolph Ziggler's? You know, because Dolph Ziggler is kind of like a heel right now. But, you know, maybe it makes sense for him to be that baby face guy that's like, hey, you know what? Like, Daniel Bryan, you should know exactly what it feels like to be in my shoes. But at the same time, too, you keep holding me back. And you were held back. You were the B plus player. Like you should understand. Like where's my opportunity? Like I can see. I can see these scenarios. I just. I don't know, man. Please chime in. If you, yeah, yeah. If you I disagree. feel like. I feel like what you're saying. Uh, I feel like. I would like another like. I didn't. I was not a fan of the authority that that faction. The authority. I don't know if you were behind them at all. No. But they they just never sunk in for me. I feel like. Uh, for a while, I thought that we teased like uh, Triple H. Kevin Owens, even like Pete Dunn or something being in there. Yeah. And then like who else was there? Chris Jericho maybe? Was that another one? Or who else was going to be a part of Samoa this group? Samoa Joe. Samoa. Yeah, it was Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, Pete Dunn, and then Triple H. We're going to be like this new version of like an evolution. And I feel like that's like a great mix of like – like I feel like they're just – right. like you know they're Triple H boys and you know that like – Samoa Joe's right there for the main events. Pete Dunn's amazing. He's he's like the Randy Orton of the group, right? Pete Dunn, because he's still like not as known as the other two in WWE. And like Kevin Owens is like that mid to main event kind of guy. And Triple H would be like the Ric Flair of the time, you know? So we'd have like uh this is like a perfect mix. I think you'd have like the same kind of mentality that you had with the uh the evolution. I feel like you put them together. That would be the kind of faction that you would like. And Triple H could use that to like his, his authority, his, his power. Not really go the authority angle because I just thought that was really boring and stupid. But I think if you just use some kind of power play in there with Triple H and Pete Dunn and Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens, like I just think that would be great. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, right now in NXT, you have a up and coming group, Sanity. So uh, Alexander Wolf, Killian Dane, uh, Nikki Cross, and then of course Eric Young, who's the leader. Um, do you think it would make sense? Because I, I think they're main roster bound at some point. Do you think it makes sense for them to expand? And and if so, who should be joining their group? Who who fits that mold? I think you could really take anyone. I like the idea when they uh, offered the jacket to Ty Dillinger. I don't know if you're watching NXT at that time. Yep. I thought that was really cool. I feel like you could do that with, like, almost anybody down there. Like, even, like, a Roderick Strong or something. Like, he doesn't fit the mold right now, but you could totally flip him if you if you put a jacket on him or something. Like, anybody, like, even, like, a Alistair Black would be great to join him, right? 
don't yeah. know if you would feel that. Um, yeah. I think Alistair Black is great on his own, though. But I feel like you could do that with pretty much anyone down there that's striving to get a, a, a new leaf, like a new lease on life down there in NXT, is put that jacket on. And even like, it doesn't make much sense, but you could do something with Hideo Itami. I mean, he could be disgruntled still and whatever, but I don't see that going that way. But I, I do think that um, Sanity should stay around, and I think they should get called up together on the main roster and do like a Shield type thing with them where they all come up and they all wreak havoc. I mean, maybe that's just the fresh faction that we need is them coming on Monday Night Raw or them coming on SmackDown and just wreaking havoc. Here's the problem with wrestling. And this problem, you'll see it's a big problem in WWE, but you're going to see that it's also a big problem in GFW, ROH, New Japan, and every other promotion. Right now, what I'm noticing is that there are people that are in the wrestling ring that are pulling off fantastic matches. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll even go as far as saying Kenny Omega uh, during the, uh, his United States Championship match. Um, fantastic match, right? But I think there is a lack of true storytelling going on in pro wrestling. Now, you're probably thinking that's not necessarily true because look at how they're building Samoa Joe. Look at how they're building this individual, AJ Styles, Kevin Owens. I'm Braun Strowman. Story. Braun Strowman. I think Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns is the one story that they're actually building. But if you really ask some people – what stories are they telling? You really don't have an answer. And, and I've noticed this. You know, it's it's this person is getting revenge for this action. This person has taken it upon himself to make his name known, so he's going to attack this person. It's never about something, like, true to the heart, something that's heartfelt or anything like that. You see what I'm saying? So I'm noticing that pro wrestling, if, if you take into account a faction, if you take into account... You know all these different, all these different scenarios and, and different elements as to why WWE is, you know, why WWE has room for improvement. I think it's because there's no story, there's no real connection. So that's why I asked you about Sanity because Sanity is a group of outcasts, and there's a lot of people that are gonna watch Sanity and they're gonna hear a promo and they're gonna see how they attack people. And they're going to think that resonates with them because maybe they are also outcasts, right? But right. who else can people relate to in WWE? You know, Samoa Joe is a Samoa submission machine. Like, this is a great wrestler. Like, we don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not really a story being told. Um, Dolph Ziggler, people, you know, six years ago got behind him because it was like, oh, he's this hardworking guy who's being kind of held back, blah, blah, blah. But there's real, there's no real story. I think the only person that people are feeling a connection to right now is Jinder Mahal. Um, I think kind of I think you're on to something. But I think you're missing what you're what you're thinking. I think you think no story, but I think it's more towards uh, there's not enough characters on television. I think is what you're is what you're trying to say. If if I'm if I'm I'm not going to speak for you, but that's what I'm getting out of this. That's what I, how I feel right now. I feel like. Um, there's there's not enough characters, but what's happening? So you're right in that regard, but there's still not enough story. Like I'm not invested into these characters. So for me, like I'm like I understand the whole Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns thing. Like these guys literally just have pure hatred towards each other. Yeah. But but we got a storyline out of Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe, and the only reason why I can tell you. 99.9 percent .9 of twitter erupted for samoa joe was because we're all fans of samoa joe we didn't feel a connection to this mm -hmm. you know the reason why so many people love john cena and love to hate john cena is the fact that millions of people connect to john cena john cena is like one of those all-around guys you know gives back to charities gives back to cancers you know like it's just one of those things I can't personally invest into some of these guys on WWE. And like I said, it's the same issue that we're seeing in GFW and ROH and, and New Japan. You know, like the whole thing with, with Kenny Omega, he had a great match, but there was nothing that led to that. It was just a tournament. It was just a fight. Like whoever won, won, and that was it. And that's what's happening, you know, all year round in New Japan, in my opinion.
You know, oh, that's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah, but, yeah. There, there is sense to get invested if you know like the backstory of Kenny Omega and all that, and you've been following for years. You get it. Um, uh, but I see as like as on the surface, you're watching like I don't really get get invested. It's like, it's like you think about like the build of these matches, right? And it, w we have build of matches like WrestleMania. We always get some stories in the build, but yes. uh, most of the time, like even Great Balls of Fire, as good of a pay per view it was, like I could not get behind any of the backstories of any of these these programs besides Roman and Braun. Um, it just didn't really. It just, it, there's something that's missing from it, like. I know that everybody says the Attitude Era was the best era. Ruthless Aggression was great as well. But, I mean, when you go back and look at the Attitude Era, there was a storytelling 101. The stories and the characters that were there at that time, like, everybody was a, like, from the D'Lo Brown to the Stone Cold Steve Austin, like, if any of those guys showed up on the team, you, you knew everybody's theme song you knew anybody from like val venus the godfather d'lo brown all the way up to the stone cold the rock and the undertaker and the triple h's you knew them all and that was the thing now you got like as much as i would like to get behind like uh tj perkins again or drew gulak or something it's just like their characters aren't resonating with people they're not like drew gulak's thing is i don't like to see flippy stuff which i like that character but then again it's like I don't think half the crowd really likes the flippy stuff. They like the the athleticism, but some of the people want the storytelling as well. You know what? Yeah. I just think like I think that we need to get to a point where it's like these characters connect with me, even though the Godfather was a was a pimp with his hose, you know, and all he did was give away some girls, and he didn't even wrestle. He was entertaining. Like that was some of the most entertaining things on television. You have to get more guys that realize that. If you do things outside of the ring, like the character wise, you don't have to go out there and kill yourself every time in the ring. You don't have to flip off the top. You don't have to do 450 splash. You don't have to do suicide dives and all that. You don't have to put on five star Dave Meltzer matches because if you do that every night on Monday Night Raw, yeah, you're going to have awesome matches. Yeah, it's going to be cool, but you're not going to have that long career like a lot of guys do. And then you're just going to be phased out. And I think that if you look at a guy like Braun Strowman, I mean, he doesn't do a lot in the ring. And how much does everybody behind him? He flipped a car over. That was the most amazing thing ever, an ambulance. And then yep. he walked out. Like, the dude does little, but he, he's just so good at what he does. And I think that's what's what's a big problem is, like, um, even with, like, we were talking about the factions, I mean, you still have to have that character behind that group because, like I said, with the authority, I never got behind the authority. It was just the, the characters weren't there. They didn't connect for me. And I think... Um, even if you did group up some of the cruiserweights, like I mentioned, if they didn't have the character, they didn't have the story. Uh, I don't think that it would work. Do you remember the right to censor? Definitely. Funny thing is, if you really think about it, like, is it fair to say that it was kind of like a parody? It was kind of like a, a joke in a way. Like, I don't think it was like that serious of like a, a, a of an actual faction, right? It was like a. It was very satire. Yeah, it was basically like. Uh, these are the people that are against WWE in real life, so let's make a group in WWE that's against all the bad stuff in WWE. Yeah, so here's the thing, though. I, I'm going to tell you the very truth. I, I've seen people, um, obviously, you know, when you play WWE, you see some of these characters and, like, created, uh, you know, community creations and stuff. But there's a lot of people, unless you watch the WWE Network, you're really not going to remember the right to censor. But you're going to remember... Val Venus, and you're going to remember Stevie Richards, and you're going to remember, you know, uh, The Godfather. You're going to remember some of these people. You're not going to remember everybody. You may not remember Bull Buchanan or whatever, yeah. but like, but you might even remember Ivory. But like, the thing is, like, you're not going to remember all of them and exactly how they played out. But the funny thing is, it was a faction that people remembered, you know? And, and another one that's going to bring ring a bell to my ear, and, and the reason why I'm going to go with this one too is because. It wasn't that big of a, a of a faction at all, but Straight Edge Society. Oh, definitely. For some if, reason. if you're watching SmackDown at the time, which that was about the only thing that was going on on SmackDown at that time. Exactly. Now the thing is, it wasn't like they did anything amazing. Um, I don't think I don't think they stayed around too long to the point where it was, you know, it was memorable. But for a lot of people, they're always going to remember CM Punk led a faction. 
you know, before Nexus, before people thought he was part of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, he was part of that. And, you know, you mentioned the 205 and, like, the flippy stuff, but it's just all about remembering things. And certain people can resonate with certain storylines. Like, for me, I can tell you because I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't watching it consistently at the time, but The Brood, right? You know, Gangrel, Edge, and Christian. Like, I never really, like, unless, you know, I watched it back on the network or something, I didn't watch it at that time thinking, all oh, these guys are amazing. I didn't really appreciate their work, you know what I mean? And obviously, Gangrel was never, like, a world champion or he wasn't anything huge. In fact, he was just kind of like a mid-carder. But there was something so cool about this faction that people who don't even watch it, they know about it. And I feel like right now, they're... WWE is missing that, you know, like Braun Strowman's an attraction because he's seven foot tall or whatever. And he's huge, you know, uh, big show, even though he's not as famous anymore, people remember the big show. Like people are like, Oh, the big show is still wrestling, you know, but at the same time too, you also have new guys that are in there and you don't really have a thought process as to what to do with them. Right. So like we've seen the Wyatt family, like one of my favorite creations in WWE next to the shield, because this is where they took, you know, three unknown guys and made them into huge stars. I think I think something positive could be said about every single individual. Luke Harper, Bray, Eric, Rowan, uh, Seth, Roman, Dean Ambrose. Even though I'm not a fan of Dean Ambrose, even though I'm not that huge of a fan of, you know, Luke Harper. Um, I mean, there's things that could be said about these guys and, and you could talk about their talent. And it, and it makes me remember these guys. And and. You know, with WWE, there's just there's that factor that's missing, and it's really hard to watch WWE at some points, and it's hard to it's hard to watch GFW because I'm gonna tell you if I had the opportunity right now to really make a major shakeup, honestly, I would fake a buyout. Like if like this is gonna get outrageous, but like WWE has been known to be the invincible brand. Like you need to do another invasion of some sort. Well, you have NXT guys that have never debuted. You know, make another invasion 2.0, something that's just like people can resonate with. You know, people know that Vince McMahon has never been challenged in, you know, 15, 16 years or whatever. It's like, you know, this guy hasn't had any competition for the longest time. Maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need to fake a story where, you know, a whole bunch of no neighbors from NXT come over and say, hey, we're taking over. You know, and, and WWE ends up buying out freaking NXT. I don't know, but it, you no, know I, I like, get what you're saying. Uh, I think what the big thing that we that we that we need to focus on here is that um, instead of having like all of these pieces in place, right? We have all these like individual guys, and like there's a few tag teams here and there. Uh, you need to look at the New Day, right? Because the New Day is you said they're more of a tag team than they are of a, uh, a faction, but the fact is that. Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E, um, as good as they were separate, together they are better. And that's kind of what it is. They need to take some of these guys that aren't being used properly and put them together. There's strength in numbers. I always say that. There's always strength in numbers. You get more people on the same page, you can have better things. I mean, think of guys like Midian and Viscera. They weren't that popular, but you remember them. They were in the ministry. Yeah. APA, yeah. they were there too. The big boss man was cool too at the time. I mean, there's just a lot of guys that, that I think would benefit if they could just put them together. I know what you're saying with like the buyout thing and shaking things up and making things interesting. It's just that we need like a major dagger in WWE. I mean, hey, you're seeing what's going on with the Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather stuff. Like we yeah. need to do something that's going to be as big as that. These dudes are throwing F-bombs out there. Maybe it's a time for another Attitude Era. You know, you talk about the time that's the time slots that this show is on and what kids watch nowadays. You think kids are PG nowadays? No, they are not. They're not. Yeah. Kids are crazy. They they have fidget spinners and they do some stupid stuff. I don't know why we've never seen a fidget spinner on Raw yet. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if you heard about this, but WWE actually made some fidget they spinners. They did. They're Nine ninety nine. No, I'm just saying they they just need to figure out like something that's going to shake it up. Whether it's a major buyout storyline where Dana White comes in and Floyd Mayweather knocks out the Big Show again, and Conor McGregor <laughs> makes somebody tap out, whatever it may be, uh, or whether it's just putting a bunch of people together, making an, a memorable faction, 
or even just get down to the core where we have great stories and great characters. I mean, I feel like we do have some stories and characters, but they're far and few between. Like we have Bron and Roman and Samoa Joe and, you know, AJ Styles kind of sometimes. And then the rest is kind of just a free for all. Like Kevin Owens always seems to do something great, uh, but that's probably to his, to his own credit. Um, but I just feel yes. like, I feel like this is pretty much just needed to shake up. You need, I think factions will work. I think putting a 205 live group together, maybe. I think maybe. Titus just, Worldwide. Maybe I, it's Titus Worldwide. Right, right, right. And I think even just guys need to use some more of their real aggression. I don't think we're out of time. I think there's, there's people are complacent. There's just too much. You see it with like Dean Ambrose, I think is complacent. I think Seth Rollins is complacent now. I think uh, there's just too many people that are just like, I'm just on Raw every week and I just do live shows and I just, just have a good time playing my video games and hang out with my buddies. Like, I don't. I don't think that's their fault, though. No, no, so, no. But I think. I think back in the day when you had the guys like Stone Cold, Triple H, Undertaker, The Rock. If you ever listen to any of those guys talk on podcasts, just like about the Attitude Era back then, it was like all of them wanted to be the top guy in the company, and they would work so hard to get to the top. I don't think there's that mentality in WWE anymore. I don't think it's that cutthroat mentality where it's like. I'm going to make you better so that we get better and that everybody gets better. And then this company grows and gets huge. And that's what spiked the Attitude Era. I'm not saying the Attitude Era was great. Everything on it was awesome. But the main event guys that were on there, you could tell that they worked their ass off to get to the top. And that's what really, that's just what I don't see in modern WWE right now. I don't see those guys that have that drive. I mean, there's a few of them. You see the ones and you know the ones because they're always in the main events. They're always up there like the John Cena's, Kevin Owens. Uh, Chris Jericho as well. They're the guys that are are reinventing themselves, having great matches, having great characters and stories to go with it. And I feel like there's just not that same passion because there's no competition for WWE. Come yeah. on, GFW is not competition. The only competition they have right now is Mayweather and McGregor, and that's going to blow anything that WWE does out of the water. WWE, I think, tends to forget that their competition is no longer just pro wrestling. Um, I think because of entertainment, the way that it works, you know, like John Cena getting engaged at WrestleMania was on all of the mainstream news, right? Right. But if that's the only reason why they're on mainstream news, then that's a problem. So, you know, you mentioned Connor and McGregor. I don't think it's too late to bring in Rousey. I think Rousey is still a big name. I think people would still be excited for Rousey. Um, in fact, I think, Rousey even coming into WWE as a competitor, not just an appearance, I think would make a lot of sense. It would shake a lot of things up. At the end of the day, man, you know, it's one of those things. Like, GFW is not competition. Uh, ROH is not competition. I don't even think New Japan's competition. Not yet, think... but they're they're getting there, but not yet. They're, they don't have the, the mass America market like WWE does. Because WWE is WWE, right? You say yeah. New Japan, people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But that's all it takes, man. It just takes a, a big company to come back. And, you know, I, I saw a tweet the other day and it was like, I think it was X-Pac who tweeted it, but it was like, you know, something about multi-million viewers uh, in 1999 and how much revenue they made. It was like 300,000 revenue and or 300 million. And then it's like in 2017, it's literally half the ratings, but quadruple the revenue. So, you know, it's one of those things where WWE is always going to be the big, you know, the, the big star in the solar system. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, they need a little bit of competition because they are becoming content with their product. Um, not to say that WWE is bad right now. I mean, there's a lot of things I've been happy about. I think one, there's one few that's, that's just beginning to, you know, roll out that, that's starting to be really good. And that's the Enzo and Cass feud. I think they're going to tell a tremendous story. But it's not enough to shape shake up the WWE in a big, big way. I mean, it's going to add a nice element to it. It's going to be a good story, but it's not going to shake things up too much. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, we'll see what happens with WWE. I'm not going to count them out, but at the same time, too, they need to do something that's going to be huge because I can tell you uh, for a fact it's not just competition with pro wrestling. MMA, boxing, huge, huge stuff happening. You know, Hollywood has huge stuff happening. And, and WWE has to compete with all forms of entertainment at this point. So, well, here's the uh, big thing, right? Before we end this thing, I just want to ask you real quick: What yeah. is the number one thing that you can think about when I say 
next week, Monday Night Raw. What do you think? For me, I think Braun Strowman. Nope. Kurt Angle and what the announcement is with Kurt Angle. His illegitimate son. <laughs> no, that's just, the main know. that's the main question. And it's like just this this cliffhanger, right? That's the problem. WWE doesn't leave us with any cliffhanger. We we always gotta be wanting more. And I don't think they did that a lot in the attitude era. They don't do that anymore. There's never like must see TV. Like I gotta tune in next week. But I really want to tune in next week to find out what's going on with Kurt Angle. You said Ronda Rousey. How awesome would it be if Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle? Ooh. Not real, yeah. but that would be crazy if that was a thing. Yeah. I can see. Uh, no, I can't. Actually, it's gonna be Stephanie like... McMahon, and then Triple H and him are gonna fight it, and that's gonna be it. Unless it's Dixie Carter. Well, when we're in New York, I think we'll have an amazing pay per view to watch. So, anyway, we'll end it here with this deep dive. I want to let you guys know that again. We were talking about that twenty-five dollar Apple gift card we're giving away. Well, we are gonna give it away at the end of this month. So if you guys go ahead and go over to iTunes, and you leave a rating and a comment over there for the podcast. That will help us out. It helps us out in the search ranking, and it helps us get more ears and eyes to the show. So if you want to do that, that would be the best way to support this show and support this uh, this journey we're on now. Um, again, let us know all of your thoughts. Do you think we're dumb and factions are not the way to go? Do you think there's something else that could save the WWE and make it more interesting? Or do you think WWE's fine and we're just off our rocker? I don't know. Maybe somebody's got better idea and go, Hey, that's the beauty of uh, pro wrestling, man. A million different opinions, and nobody can tell me that my opinion's wrong. But I can't tell you that your opinion's wrong. I can't tell anybody their opinion's wrong because that's the beautiful thing about pro wrestling. Nobody's wrong. You know, we all see the product differently. So that's one thing I, I want to make sure that everybody knows. We all see it differently. I want to know people's perspective. So obviously – you know, leaving us a review or leaving a comment on a video or tweeting us, whatever it may be. I want to know what you guys are thinking because, uh, you know, maybe WWE is fine, but I think we might, I think we both made some really good points about the, you know, the, the, the factions, I think, you know, 205 live stuff like that. So I, I want to know what the community says, because like I said, we all see it differently. There's all different perspectives and nobody's perspective is better than the other. So, yeah, yeah, pretty much. So we'll end it here, guys. Thank you guys for watching, listening, however you consume this. It is on iTunes. Just search OMG Wrestling Podcast on iTunes. Go to omgwrestling.com. We'll have videos. We'll have articles. We'll have podcasts up there. And this dive is going to be going up every Wednesday at midnight central time. So make sure you stay tuned um, and locked into this because every Wednesday we'll have a new deeper dive on this. Um, we're going to try and get more Monday Night Raw reviews, more SmackDown reviews, more pay-per-view reviews, maybe get into some old school stuff. But every Wednesday night at midnight, we're coming at you with dive, dot, 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 dive. Thank you, Randy Orton, for that meme. And uh, we'll go ahead and end it here, guys. Again, I want to thank Gunners for sponsoring this. If you want to get a pair of Gunners, go to omgwrestling.com slash Gunners, G-U-N-N-A-R-S, and use code TonyBeatsGuy to save 10%. Ango, you want to sign us out? Everybody, you have a wonderful day, a wonderful night. Make sure you guys are following us on Twitter at Tango with Ango at Tony Pizza Guy. Too sweet. Yeah. I, pff, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play this song and play us out. We're good. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Wednesday with another dive.